Well, welcome to my channel. This has become one of my favorite videos to do. Okay, I'm saying that. I've only done one of these in the past, but this I'm planning to make a series every other month. I already have it scheduled in my calendar. We are doing this. I got the idea for these speed review videos from Nicole Renee. I love her. She does these. So welcome. My name is Jessica. If you are new to my channel, I hope that you will subscribe if you enjoy this style of video. I do beauty, lifestyle, home videos. So today we're going to be talking about 10 or 11 products that I have been trying for the past month or two. So I kind of treat this as the opposite of a first impressions because it really is my like actual review of products that I really know how I feel about them at this point. So I will have links, prices, etc., down below. You're gonna get to see me putting virtually all of these on my face today so you can see how they work up close. I've got my princess mug that I just cannot stop using. <laughs> Let's get into it. So today's video is actually sponsored by Function of Beauty. If you've never heard of this brand, it is a custom hair care brand. You can create online exactly what you want in a shampoo and conditioner. So this is one of those brands that has like over 30,000 five-star reviews. So it's really hyped up. So I was kind of curious about it. My thing is, I feel like I always have like three or four different shampoos and conditioners in my shower. And there'll be shampoos and conditioners I love, but like one is for when my hair is naturally wavy or curly. One is for dandruff and scalp care. One is for when I'm heat styling my hair. And it kind of gets to that point where I'm like, there's got to be something that can kind of do it all. So when you try this, you take the hair quiz online and you go through and you explain kind of what your hair type is, but then you can pick up to five different hair goals that you have. So for my formula, I wanted curl definition. I also wanted it to soothe my scalp. I wanted that thermal protection when I heat style it. And then of course I wanted my hair to be stronger and shinier. So you get to pick what color you want. So I chose pink for both of them because it's my favorite color, but you can mix and match. You can go dye free and have no color if you'd like, and then you can pick your scent. I chose the nude peach scent. It smells unbelievably good. I've been using these bad boys for quite a while. I'm about halfway through them. I just feel like my hair is the healthiest it's looked in such a long time. And not only that, but when I've worn my hair naturally wavy, it also looks really good that way. And that is very hard to find in the same shampoo and conditioner. I also love that your name is on it. So it really does feel customized. They're also a really cool company. They're vegan and cruelty free. These products are formed without sulfates, parabens, phthalates, mineral oil, gluten. If you felt like you've never really found that shampoo and conditioner that's just right for you, that does everything you want it to, I really think you would like this. So if you're interested in checking out Function of Beauty, click the link below to get 20% off your first order. I really am just loving this. I was telling my husband, I was like, dude, I just feel like I have not tried a shampoo and conditioner that feels like it's truly made just for Jessica. Hold on, one more sniff. So thank you Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So moving into the makeup reviews. So it really is a solid mix of drugstore and high end. We'll start with one of the products that I have been the most excited about, and it is this product from Wet n Wild. This is their Photo Focus Foundation, but it's their new dewy formulation. I tried the original one and I didn't really love it. it. I didn't appreciate the smell in it, but on top of that, it just never looked right on my skin. A little bit cakey. My skin is a little bit normal to dry. This is gorgeous. It's not quite a dewy, dewy finish. I'll show you me applying it right now. It really is more of a satin, leaning dewy, if that makes sense, which is exactly my favorite finish. I just feel like my skin looks healthy when I'm wearing it. This is not gonna be a foundation that lasts you 15 hours. If that's, you know, if you're someone that works for really long amounts of time and you don't wanna have to worry about touching up, this might not be for you. But if you're typically wearing makeup like 10-ish hours, I think you'd love it. I always set it with a powder in my T-zone where most foundations break apart, but I just think for the finish alone, I just love it. I genuinely cannot stop using it. It has a paddle applicator, which I know some people don't love. I really don't mind because I just draw it on my skin. Say what you will about it, but I, I just kind of like it. I use my favorite sponge to apply it. This is the $1.50 pawpaw sponge from Shop Miss A. I need to buy a million. A lovely subscriber sent this. I literally cannot see, stop using this one. And I keep saying I'm gonna get online and buy it and I need to buy like 10. So this next one I have some thoughts on. So it's the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. This one is pretty darn new. This was sent in PR. I feel a little wishy-washy. I like this concealer. I'm not planning on getting rid of it. The only thing I use this for is if I need a long wearing concealer with high coverage. It's a thin formula, but it definitely covers and it stays in place, especially if you set it. And we're gonna talk about a really good drugstore under eye setting powder in a minute. Oh my gosh. But I just feel like it looks a little unnatural. So. If you're looking for something a little more natural and breathable, I don't think this is gonna be the one for you. But if you are looking for a concealer that really covers pretty well 
and definitely stays in place, then you would like it. This is never gonna be an everyday concealer for me, but I do use it for those times when I need my makeup to last a very long time. I did apply it today with this hourglass brush that they sent. I actually prefer to just use a sponge. I kind of mix and match with my finger today and a little bit of the brush and a little bit of the sponge. I prefer it with the sponge. The brush is not bad though. But again, it's pricey for what it is, but it is nice for blending out uh, eye primer. Just saying. I was telling my husband the other day that I feel like this kind of weather we're having right now where it's like 50 degrees and the sun comes in and out and it can be a little bit rainy too. Even though it's kind of gray and like bleh here in March, I also am kind of feeling like these few weeks in March are kind of enjoyable in their own way because there's that anticipation for spring coming. And so I'm trying to enjoy that part of this like end of winter moment because it can be kind of great. Now today is actually a sunny day, so I'm like in an extra good mood. Well here, let's go ahead and talk about that under eye powder that I was telling you about. So this is from number seven. You can get this at Target online and in store. Oh, I think you can get it at Walgreens too because I'm pretty sure that's where I bought this one. It's the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Translucent Finishing Powder. I have it in light. This is a gorgeous under eye setting powder. I am working on a dupes video and this may or may not be a pretty darn good dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder that I also love and I've already hit pan on. This is gorgeous. So I used it to set my under eyes with that hourglass concealer today. And I feel like this is one of the few pressed powders that almost makes the area under your eye look flatter. And I mean that in a good way where it just looks a little bit more flattened out and even can't explain it. Now, I have talked about a lot recently that, you know, when you look at any concealer and powder up close, you start to see some of the texture. But I'm also realizing that, you know, if you're typically a foot or two away from like literally anyone you're talking to, most people are not going to notice that. So this is one of those powders that, you know, it is still a powder, but I do think it's on the more invisible side when it comes to powder. Guys, I just, I'm really, really enjoying it. I have used it to set my face. It's okay, but it is I think like, especially on my nose, you know, where I've got like vellus hair around, I feel like it looks a little powdery there. So I've pretty much exclusively used this now for my under eye. Highly recommend, totally love. Okay, a product I was not as big of a fan of, it's the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. I have talked about this recently and it says it's a full coverage makeup. It's got SPF of 50, which I think is so cool, but it just never sunk into my skin right. I just felt like every time I'd be rubbing it in or applying it in any way, it never quite looked right and even on my skin. And so for that reason, I just felt like meh. I have mentioned maybe getting another shade in this. If you are near my tone typically, like for example, in the Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation, I'm the shade Shell Ivory. If you have a match in this and you're similar to me, please let me know. I have the shade 102 and it's just a little too yellow for me. It just doesn't look right. Those are kind of my thoughts. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. It was just a little bit patchy and I never got it to blend in where it actually looked nice on my skin. I have had so many questions about my like updated thoughts on this because I finally bit the bullet and bought it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Darling Palette. When I bought this, and this bad boy is expensive. When you look at the pictures online, it looked a little bit less warm tone online. Just gonna say. So when I got it in person and opened it, I'm like, oh, it is a little bit warmer than I thought. I knew there were some warm tones, but anyway. I love small palettes. I'm just really into them right now. I love everything about this. I still stand by that the quality of these shadows is very, very good. It's really buttery, really easy to blend. So to show you the look I did, I used the second shade in and I just blended it all over the lid. And it's just this really pretty wash of shimmer. Of course, if I applied it with my fingers, it'd be even more pigmented. And then I used the third matte shade in to kind of detail the crease just a little bit. And then I blended that in. And then I took the fourth shade in and tapped it on the outer part of my lid. And then I grabbed the lightest shade and tapped it kind of on the center, blended it all together. I think this creates such gorgeous looks. However, I also, you guys know I'm a broken record, love the Charlotte Tilbury Quad and Pillow Talk. Love, uh, to the point where I hit paint on this literally within a few months. You don't need both. I think that's where I'm at. Now, I don't mind having both because I'm using them like crazy. They're both high quality. I will say if you don't like this kind of shimmer topper that she always has in her quads where it really is not a color, it's more like a shimmery wash that you tap on top of your lid. If you don't like that, and pretty much all of her quads I think have that, then you might go for something like this because it doesn't have one of those. So if you felt like you would waste that. The shades are similar. They're certainly not the same, but they are awfully similar. I do think these are, especially this like pinkish matte, is a little bit easier to just quickly blend into the crease, but 
they're both so good. They're both so good. I just don't think you need both. Really think about which ones would you use more of the shades from, and I would say go that route. Now, I think obviously the quad is just a little bit cheaper, but they're both expensive. So if you are really gonna spend the money on this, really think about which one you'd use more. I think they're both very high quality, blendable, beautiful, long wearing, love them both so much. Now, Charlotte Tilbury, if you're watching, I would love if you came out with a palette like this, but with cooler tones. Oh, baby. Okay, let's talk about this one. So I'm working on trying to find a dupe for the Thrive Cosmetics mascara that I love. It's a tubing mascara, it is the bomb. I, mine just pretty much is done. So I'm like, okay, but it's expensive. I wanna see if I can find a drugstore dupe. So this was my first foray into finding a dupe. A lot of people online recommended this. It is the L'Oreal Double Extend Beauty Tubes Mascara. This one is definitely different than that one because it has a primer side and then the mascara side. I don't typically like mascara primers. I don't feel like they help my lashes much, so, but I did it anyway, so I'll show you me using it. You put the white primer on and comb it through your lashes, and then of course go in with the mascara side. This has been open for a few weeks, so I, I kept thinking, well, you know, I would use it off and on, and I would think, well, I'll, you know, as the weeks go on, maybe it'll be a little less wet and a little more volumizing. No, I just don't love this. I do think you can get definitely a very natural lash look, but once it dries, because it is a tubing mascara, it's definitely hard to comb through. Honestly, I'm wearing this today, but I ended up going back through my lashes with the L'Oreal Bambi Eye Mascara to add the volume that I wanted because this was not even close to what I typically like. So do I think it's awful? No, but I think you have to like this kind of mascara that's just lightly, lightly curled, light black, not super volumized. So. I would say definitely not a dupe. I'm still working on it. I might even film a video of all of the dupes I've tried so you can see all of them because I am determined to find a dupe for that stupid mascara. Okay, a high-end one that I had really high hopes for but I didn't end up loving as much as I had hoped. It's this Too Faced Turn Up The Light Complexion Enhancing Highlighting Palette. They did send this to me in PR. Look how pretty it is, you guys, come on. Like literally, I saw this online and I was like, oh. My heart started beating really hard. I'm like, that looks right up my alley. It was supposed to be kind of a radiant setting powder, highlight, and then a really amped up glittery highlight, right? I have used this in many different ways in the past month, and I just, I really like the more natural highlight, the glow powder. I have it on today as my highlight. It is gorgeous. I don't think it like crazy emphasizes my texture. It's one of those highlights I totally love and would buy individually. I really, really wanted to like the soft focus powder. I've used it in my T-zone thinking, well, that's where I typically would add a little bit of highlight anyway, because I like it to look a little dewy but it just looked powdery. And every time I would use it, I would think, well, maybe this time it'll look, maybe it was the foundation. Every way I've used it, it looks powdery. Like I said, especially on my nose, um, in this area of my face. So I'm sad to say that. The Dazzle, I just didn't like. I used it like once or twice. It's too glittery for my taste. If you're gonna spend this amount of money anyway, because again, this isn't cheap, you're probably better off getting one of the Hourglass ones. I would love if Too Faced came out with like this glow powder alone. It's so gorgeous. But I'm really bummed about that. I don't know that I'm ready to declutter it yet. I wanna keep playing with it, but I think the packaging, it's like the old school Too Faced packaging, a nice magnetic closure. Like I love everything about the way it looks and the idea of it, but just in use, not as good as I'd hoped. A product, however, that I was surprised that I liked. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, but it's their new glowy version. What? I'm surprised that I like this. I don't think this is for everyone, but I put it on today and I typically will apply it in my T-zone mostly. And then I'll still set my cheeks. Even when I'm using cream and liquid cheek products, I still feel like setting it really helps keep the foundation in place while I'm blending in the cream. It, I, it's just something I've been doing lately and it is really working well. This, if you have oily skin, I don't think you'll like. I do think it sets foundation nicely and you can really see, but you can also see that glow, you know? I really, it's something that I was so concerned it'd be way too glowy and I do think you can get heavy handed so I always get plenty on my brush and then really tap it off into there and then shake it into the air to like really make sure it's the finest mist of powder if you if that makes sense. You can get heavy handed, beware, but I think this is absolutely gorgeous and so unique. I've never really had a glowy loose powder. So go figure, I think if you have normal to dry skin and you like using loose powder that you would really like this. So uh, drugstore one I've been trying that I've completely flip flopped on to be honest. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Cream Blush. I have it in the shade Butterflies. First of all, when I first tried this, and I love cream and liquid blush, okay, let me start by saying that. This is like metallic. And I don't know if all of the shades are like that, but this one certainly is, which 
right off the bat, I'm like, dang it. Cause of course there was no tester in the store. So I bought it not knowing and I was all pumped and anyway. So that took me by surprise, but it's just one of those things when I was first applying it, it would look okay. And so I was really trying to make it work. The more I've tried it, the more I've realized it just ends up looking patchy. It pulls the makeup up from underneath it, no matter what I'm wearing under it. So as you see me applying it here, you can see that it just starts to look patchy and then it really starts to look bad the more you're trying to blend it in. I've used it with a stippling brush, sponge, fingers, all of it. I think if you already own it and it's the only one you own, you can make it work. But I really would not recommend this. This is not one of the best ones at the drugstore, not even close. I have done an entire video of the best drugstore cream and liquid blushes, bronzers, highlights. I will link that video up in that eye up there and down below if you're curious to watch that after this video because I did a lot of testing and I really did find some amazing ones way better than this. Next up is this Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I obviously have a soft spot for Charlotte Tilbury in my heart. I, they've not sent me PR or anything like that. I buy all these with my own money, but it's one of those brands that I just find myself constantly loving so many of their products. I need to do an updated, I did a Charlotte Tilbury Best and Worst video years ago, and I've changed my mind on a few products, and of course I've tried more products, so I need to do an updated version. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. I know it's pricey, but it's one of those, like if you were gonna splurge on like one product, it's a really good brand. So this is her magic cream. I bought this really small one because I heard, I think Nicole Renee talking about this and she was using it. So I tried it. It definitely has a little bit of a kind of floral scent, not crazy overpowering, but it's definitely there. So I think if you're sensitive to that, I wouldn't. I've flown through this. I use this for as my daytime moisturizer. I put this on and then I put on my SPF on top of it. It's, it's moisturizing. I feel like my skin feels crazy soft when I'm using it and I feel like foundation sets really nicely on top of it. It's just pricey. I also really like another expensive one, which is the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I could see myself going back and forth between these two because I really do like both. Let me know, have you found a dupe for this kind of product? Because I would love to know. But I just feel like it toes the line between like a gel moisturizer, which I don't really like, and like a really thick moisturizer. This is like perfectly in between. It blends in quickly to your skin, it moisturizes, it looks good under makeup. That's what I'm loving about it. So I think that is everything I needed to talk about. I'm sure I forgot about like five products I've been trying and I'll be like, dang it, when I'm sitting to edit this. But regardless, like I said, if you're into this style of video, definitely check out my speed review video I did just a couple of months ago. I will link up in the eye and down below if you wanna watch that after this as well. If you're enjoying this, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know, it helps me on YouTube. I really hope you'll subscribe. It makes it easier to find my videos here on YouTube. And of course, if you are subscribed, please hit that notification bell because then you'll be alerted anytime that I upload a new video. So other than that, I'll see you guys in my next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.